Well, hello there, humans of these earthlings, hope you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and if you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it too. Welcome back to the channel, I'm Bushgrin. Today's video is about the top credit grinders in World of Tanks Blitz. Um, the reason this is going to feature heavily the premium tanks of Tier 8 is because they have a much, much higher credit coefficient, and that's why people drive them quite often, apart from the fact that some of them are very, very good. For instance, like uh, the Tier, tier 8 Skoda. In the European line has like a 90% credit coefficient. The tank you're looking at here now has a 170% credit coefficient, which is in fact the lowest of the top three credit grinders that I'm going to feature. And that means it earns a lot more credits. This is the Centurion 5 and 1. Now, this is not the best tanks at tier 8 premium, or, you know, this is the best tank for grinding credits. Um, there are two tanks. Well, there's a few tanks that aren't going to be here that people will probably be like, well, that's ridiculous. But I'll, I'll give you my reasons for it. The Progetto isn't here. The Action X isn't here. Although it was right up there because the Action X shares so much with this tank. But it's just not mobile enough for me, which means that you're quite often going to be going up against, frontally, against Tier 9 heavies. And that means you're going to have to bop out a lot of premium rounds, which lowers your credit coefficients. And I like... The idea of having a turret like this that's actually quite good and the same kind of gun, just not as much DPM, but more mobility. Anyway, the, the Action X was literally the fourth place or no, fifth place on my list along with the Progetto. What the 5 and 1 has that I think is so important when you are grinding credits is a tier 9 gun. A tier 9 gun quite simply means you pay less money on the table for firing your rounds because your base damage, your base penetration is 226 millimeters. Now the Progetto's base penetration, for instance, is 180 millimeters and goes up to 259. The Sense base penetration is nearly 50 millimeters higher than the Progetto's, which is massive. It also has higher DPM than the Progetto, although we all know that the Progetto actually has a very different methodology for pumping out the DPM with the auto reloading. It's also got this wonderful, wonderful gun. The Centurion 5 and ones Tier 9 gun, uh, the 20 pounder, is 0.299 dispersion. 0.299 dispersion when fully buffed. That is incredibly accurate, as you can see there. I didn't have to go to premium rounds on that very slim, narrow area for the TD. I did go to premium rounds here because we're now getting serious. Like, this is this is time to put the carry pants on and absolutely try and get the job done. So I'm going to go premium. Uh, and that's another one of the contenders for top uh, credit grinder. But the reason I didn't include the Russian heavies like the IS-3 Defender and the 252U and the, and the like is their guns are so unreliable as you saw there. They're, they're really derpy guns. And what I want when I'm grinding credits is reliability. I want a high baseline so I'm earning more money. And even firing that promo at the end there, we still made 100,000 credits in that game which is obviously quite good. And for those reasons, mobility, incredibly good gun, uh, strong turret, and 170% credit coefficient, I choose the Centurion 5 and 1 as number three on my list. Number two is the Chimera. Um, I talked to Tony from Wargaming and I'd never really played the Chimera before. I wasn't really that interested. I didn't like the look of it. It's quite an ugly looking boxy tank with a very flat frontal area on the turret. And he was like, it's my favorite tier eight tank. It's the best tier eight tank. He loves it to bits. And so I went and had a go on it. And you know what? Tony knows his stuff. Um, this thing is, its armor is very good for a medium, but it's flat, the front of the turret, and that holds it back a little bit. But what I really love about it is this, the long reload. Now you might say, that's crazy. Why would you love the long reload? It Because it means your DPM is still good. Your DPM is the same as a Progetto, 2022 DPM versus 2030 DPM. And that might seem, counterintuitive but it's good for a couple of reasons number one is this tank has 440 base alpha so you only have to expose yourself while putting out good dpm for a very very short period of time and then you get to hide and completely reset your camo 
and come out again very shortly after, if you're in a, a peak fight. You go, I mean, and you max roll for 550. That's something that is just crazy, 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 crazy good. Like, if you're max rolling for 550, you are making a lot of input uh, in terms of damage. It's, it's not a terribly exciting drive. Its mobility is even worse than the sense, which is lower end mobility, although it's actually not that terrible these days. But the gun itself is excellent. High penetration, solid gun handling, 0 0.330 dispersion. But once you let the aim time go down, it's, it's generally pretty good. And the armor is fairly solid. And your credit coefficient is 175% which again is up above a lot of those tanks that you're going to be finding out there. It's way more of a heavy uh, than it is a medium at times. It's able to do heavy trades. Like 440 Alpha is more than most of the 120 millimeter toting guns out there popping 400. Uh, this is a special, special tank. And it's so box-like and workman-like that it's quite, I mean, I it's armor profile's good, but it's still unattractive. It's not like I prefer to drive the scent just because it looks prettier, but this I think is a more effective tank in terms of outputting damage. Anytime you're able to output damage and then hide is a good time. I mean, this is what you're really looking for in the world of credit grinding. Low risk, high damage, lots of credits. And again, the gun while not tier nine has good penetration. All right, let's have a look now at the number one on my list. And again, this is purely for grinding credits, nothing else. Okay, I understand that some of these are not, I mean, 152,000 credits. Is that not good? This is the bank. This is the German bank, the ever reliable, absolutely stupid Lerva. It has over 180% credit coefficient. You heard that right. It's 185% credit coefficient. That's 10% more than the wonderful Chimera. It's 15% more than the Centurion 5 and 1 that you saw earlier. And it's got a tier 9 gun. And you'll see the armor profile there. See the sizzle? That was premium ammunition fired at me. It was premium ammunition because... They basically can't pen it easily. It's a tough, tough tank to pen. Something all three of these tanks have in common is gun depression. If you have gun depression, it's easy to manufacture shots. Eight degrees of gun depression on this little baby means that you can easily manufacture shots over slight ridges like this, hide your lower plate, angle your upper plate, and make it very, very difficult to be penned without Premo, which means you're staying alive longer, you're taking less damage. And then the gun itself, that's a heavy tank gun. That's a tier nine gun with 0.30 dispersion on a heavy tank with a lot of hit points, good solid armor, a high credit coefficient. And because it's a tier nine gun, your base penetration is 234 millimeters on your AP. 234. 234. If you thought the sense penetration was good at 226, 234 is another 12 millimeters on top. So you don't have to fire a whole lot of Premo. You can also hit weak points extraordinarily easily. You have a big whopping fat German hit point pool and there is nothing out there at your tier that you can't penetrate with relative ease. Uh, it's a very impressive tank all round, but again, it's, I mean, we hit that. The fact that we hit that shot was silly. And now, unfortunately, the team has folded on the flank and we're gonna have to push forward. I turn the turret just so it's harder to Hit me, hopefully I can get it behind. We just have to eat it, and then we're on the push. On the move, no problem, straight through the edge. I'm gonna take the hits, because I've got slightly more than Maxi. And into the hit point pool again. Uh, into the, uh, oh, here we go. Look at the angle. You can angle it up so easily coming around these little ridges. Oh, hello. Tiger one got me unawares there, but we've taken him down. We're very low on the hit point pool, but this is what this tank does so very, very well. Once you get your angle set, the gun hits and it hits and it hits and it hits and it hits again. And uh, you're gonna see just how nicely it hits here as the near full health Centurion Mark I 
defender comes uh, screaming over the hill. Set him on fire. <laughs> Get hit him once. We both hit him. Yeah, that's right. And suddenly things, while incredibly unlikely, look a little bit better. It's also able to bully tier 7 tanks very, very nicely. Um, the reason for that is that your armor profile is hard to pin for tier 8 tanks, but not impossible. It's just kind of where they have to use a, uh, a nice amount of Premo. But against tier 7 tanks, especially lights and mediums that aren't really what you'd call high, DP, high penetration monsters, it is a very, very difficult proposition. And when the pressure is on and you need that gun to rely on, there's the bank. Again, the bank. The Lerva. It's been the German bank for about eight years now, and it maintains its level of German bank efficiency. Um, how much for that absolutely monstrous carry there? Uh, 4,500 damage, 4,600, which equates to a mastery, and how much coinage, Mr. Level Lever? Yeah, a lot of money. <laughs> I'm Bushka. Those are my top three credit grinders in Blitz. Simple, obvious tanks with high penetration, low use of Premo, and a whole lot of gun depression. Try them. See how you go. Report back.